Well, hello everybody and good day. My name is Braun Hansborough, more commonly referred to as the Flower Guy Braun. And it is such a pleasure today to be recording this brief segment on how I use some of my favorite accent decor pieces. In particular, I'm going to be talking about today and designing with my favorite accent decor tall vase, the bespoke vase. I wanna tell you a little bit about why this is my favorite vase. And the primary reason is because of these beautiful crystal cuts. These particular cuts are absolutely spectacular in how they add elegance and substance to any room. The movement, the dimensions, everything about this vase is absolutely beautiful. Um, I've used this vase in many applications, some of them being ballroom settings, some of them being more shabby chic settings, and no matter where I'm applying this product, it goes off without a hitch every single time. So, before we start actually designing, I wanna to talk to you about some of the best practices when working with a large vase similar to this bespoke vase from Accent Decor. So, the things that I like to take into consideration first is the scale. The scale of the centerpiece, the scale of the room, the height of the ceilings, and how all of those different factors play a role in my vase selection. I typically use these tall vases in large ballroom settings that have high ceilings, vast open spaces that lend very well for large pieces. I would not, however, use this vase in a drop ceiling space or a space that doesn't have taller ceiling. So be mindful of your scale, be mindful of where you're going to be using the vase and how that's going to impact with the environment. So those are some of my best practices and I'm going to move this pretty tall centerpiece out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. So we're going to move you my pretty off to the side and we're going to get ready to start talking about some flowers. So before we get started, I want to talk about a little bit of our flower selection and how I came up with this design. Well, it's fall, but I am getting tired of your typical fall colors, the burgundies and the oranges. I get it, but hey, it's time to reinvent what fall flower palettes look like. And so as I was searching in my wholesaler's cooler, I came across these beautiful cherry brandy roses. And what I love about them is the beautiful variegated petals, how the center of it is a little bit lighter and the outside is a little darker. And this is gonna go perfect with another rose that we chose, which was called a big lavender. And so even though this isn't your typical lavender, it is a shade. And what I love about these two flowers together is that it really gives you a very nice blend of colors, but also a way to separate the colors and then find opportunities to blend them in between. So this is gonna be more of our lighter tone rose. This is more of our darker tone, more saturated color. And the two of these will play very nicely together. And so I love to build bridges of color. We start off light, we get a little bit darker, and then the petals of this one is kind of complement the outside of the first ones. Then we also have some beautiful, large, fresh, well hydrated white hydrangea. For these large centerpieces, these are some of the best flowers to use because of the real estate that they take up. And so for large, full centerpieces, hydrangea are almost always a go-to. Love them. I'm also gonna be incorporating some really pretty lavender snapdragons. These are some of my favorite flowers. I love the movement and the flow of them. I also love the softness and it almost looks like a Monet painting, just how soft and elegant they are. And then we're also at the end gonna add some highlights of some beautiful tulips that I've gone ahead and staked for easy insertion. And now I'm gonna bring up a pre-greened block. And I went ahead and pre-greened this piece for time's sake so that you all don't have to be bored with me greening a centerpiece, even though I know that might be more entertaining than I might think it is, but I didn't want to bore you with that. So I believe today we're establishing this as my front, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the greenery options that I used. 
So let's see if I can get around it. So these beautiful pieces that are spiking out and creating so much organic movement are called Ely Agnes. This is my favorite green. I don't find it in any wholesaler, no farm. I literally forage for it in random places that I have found in my hometown. So we're using foraged Ely Agnes. We're also using lemon leaves, which is a very nice waxy, hearty, greenery that does a really good job of filling centerpieces like that. And then lastly, I came in with seeded eucalyptus, which really adds a really nice highlight and a Kelly green tone, which contrasts the dark greens of the lemon leaf. So this is our foundation. And as you can see, I was not trying to create a perfectly balanced and you know symmetrical centerpiece. What I'm actually trying to do is create organic movement and a natural growth pattern. Even though these particular greens would not be growing together, technically, I still wanted it to look like it was coming out of the ground. And you'll notice that I have some pieces that are angled really low into the foam so that I can get a really nice cascade and drape down once I sit it on top of the bespoke vase. And that is a beautiful accent to have these beautiful crystal cuts on your glass and then to have these delicate stems of beautiful greenery just trailing down. It just really creates that ethereal, elegant, timeless look consistently. So we pre-greened and the first flower we're actually gonna start inserting is going to be our hydrangea. And so what I like to do with my first placement of hydrangea is I actually like to start very deep into the foam and low, almost riding on that line right on the edge of the loamy dish. And I do that because these first insertion points are really establishing the foundation of my centerpiece. And I wanna make sure that when I sit this beautiful arrangement on top of the bespoke vase, that you can't see the rim of my loamy dish and you can't see the chicken wire that my foam is wrapped in. We never want our mechanics to show. And so starting low and establishing that first line, not only are we concealing our mechanics, but we're also creating a really nice full cover design and not something that looks like an afterthought. So I'm gonna just follow these first lines and sometimes you gotta go in pretty firmly with the hydrangea or any flower that you're inserting when you have this, many, this much product in something. So one tip is instead of holding the flower towards the neck, I really want you to hold it like you're writing with a pen or a pencil. This allows you to get a much firmer and more solid insertion the first time, as opposed to accidentally in some cases you know, tearing the foam or breaking the stem, which I know is almost like breaking our own necks. It's devastating when we break flowers. So I'm gonna keep on going. And again, I'm following these lines and creating that first line or plane, if you will. And I'm just gonna keep on filling in, going around and down and in and out to make sure that I have really nice coverage all throughout this centerpiece. And so I'll tell you a story about my relationship with Accent Decor and how that all came about. So when I first got started designing, I tell everyone, you know, pace yourself, take your time, give yourself grace as you grow. Because when I started, my first inventory was nothing but clear glass five by five inch cubes. And I was so proud of the fact that I owned inventory, not thinking of what anyone else was doing, which is why that, that time in my business was so special, because I was more focused on what I was doing or what skills I needed to develop to be a better designer. Um, and I ended up going to a continuing education opportunity and for the first time, I was seeing these beautiful vases that I know that I didn't have access to at the time. And so I just started wondering like, my goodness, I can only imagine what my work would look like on top of some of these beautiful stands, these beautiful vases, these beautiful votives. Everything I had was either disposable or should have been disposable. Um, but you know, you live, you learn, you, you know better, you do better. 
And after being introduced to accent decor, I feel like my design voice changed because, because I had found a retailer that had consistent product that mirrored the style that I love to create the most with flowers. And, you know, historically, I'm more of a ballroom, you know, large scale designer. And the pieces that I was finding at Accent Decor allowed me to achieve my signature looks very easy um, every single time. And they're, they've always been so wonderful to work with. And you can see I'm working on a Lazy Susan so I can always get different vantage points. And so I'm just gonna keep on going, making sure that everything is in different, on different planes and I'm not bunching too much because we still have quite a bit of product to go. One thing I'll say is when doing these centerpieces, especially the larger ones for the first few times, it's very easy to feel as though maybe your recipe isn't right and you're gonna run out of flowers and you wanna just kinda of make everything so super tight and compacted. Um, but I just encourage you to trust your recipe and, and follow it. And then if you need to make some revisions, of course that's okay. Um, but, but always trust your recipe. And I've learned that recipes are the best way not only to remain profitable, but to also make sure that I stay within the expectations of the design. I'm not interpreting something inappropriately that the client isn't expecting. So as I'm spinning, you may notice that it might not look like, you know, the hydrangeas are placed perfectly, and that is great because I'm not going for perfect placements. I'm really going for an overall shape right now, and then once I've established that shape, then I'll come in with the other layers, and we'll start to build more shape and definition as we see fit. But keep in mind, my goal here is to create an organic, natural-looking centerpiece that is clearly contrived and, and man-made. So just keep in mind that the goal is not for perfect symmetry at all. And again, I think we established this is our front. So you can kind of see the movement and the flow of how we have our foundation. We started off with well-soaked foam, float-soaked foam, and what that means is instead of forcing your foam into the water and creating air bubbles and pockets, we actually place the foam on top of the water and let it naturally soak down until it's fully hydrated. And then of course we wrap that foam in chicken wire and secured it very carefully to our Lomi tray with waterproof tape. We then came through and added our Ely Agnes first to create our beautiful organic and trailing lines. We have some pieces that are angled down very nicely so that we can get a nice cascade feel. Then we went in with our waxy toned Lemon leaf, beautiful, one of my all time favorites. Then we finally came in with our seeded eucalyptus to highlight the darker green tones that we have. And then our first flower insertion are our beautiful white hydrangea. So next we're gonna go in with these beautiful cherry brandy roses. And what I'm trying to do here is to create, again, depth and dimension. And so what I'm gonna do is some, you'll notice that I'm gonna try to keep a lot of these flowers grouped together, um, but not necessarily right on top of each other. I want them to all have a moment to shine and to be unique and beautiful, but I don't want them to overcrowd each other and take away from the other's value. So I'm gonna find very strategic opportunities to insert our cherry brandy roses. One of the things I noticed as I've traveled and designed with other people in their spaces, and I've learned how other people approach design, um, I've learned that um, I'm probably one of the few folk who actually build colors one at a time. Um, a lot of people, I think, um, do all of the colors together, and I think I understand their thought process, but mine is I really like to control the texture, and I need to be in control of all elements of the design, and when I start placing, when I personally start placing flowers um, in groupings outside of one color group, I tend to make a misstep and, and don't necessarily group or layer the way that I like to layer. So 
I figured out what works for me as a designer. And of course, you have to figure out what works for you. Keeping in mind that we all have our own unique design voices and what works for me and what works for another person or someone that you look up to might not work for you. And that's okay. Follow your own design voice. So I'm gonna keep on going. And just for recipe sake, I actually have one bunch, which is 25 of these cherry brandy roses that I'm inserting now. So we have a full bunch of 25 cherry brandy roses. In terms of hydrangea, we had 25 white hydrangea. They're not jumbo. They are the standard hydrangea. I believe they are a select brand. Um, very, very trusty and they do not deflate on me. I've been using this particular variety for several years now. I know some people have a hard time working with hydrangea, but we have not experienced any of those issues with this particular farm. So we're just gonna keep on coming through with our cherry brandy roses. for you there you go and again I'm still spinning and trying to make sure that I have views from different vantage points I think as designers we sometimes need a perspective shift um, to reimagine some of our placements and to reimagine our designs so consider every time I do a spin or step back a perspective change and that that whole philosophy of changing the perspective and reimagining some things is so applicable in our day-to-day -day lives and our businesses, especially in a time like now where things are a little bit less, um, you know, we don't know what's coming. We don't know what's happening all the time. So a little bit less predictable than what we probably are used to. All right, I've gone in with my final cherry brandy. And of course, the last one always wants to give me a hard time. Here, start from scratch with that one. Perfect. So now we have put in our beautiful cherry brandy roses. And I'm going to spin this around so that you can see how those have been layered in. And now we're going to start working with our large lavender. I'm going to actually move this a little closer to me. All right, and again, we're filling in holes, but also trying to be very strategic with our placements. Want to make sure that we're still doing some level of grouping, and I don't want any flower to necessarily overshadow the impact of the flower before it. I'm going to leave this one a little taller. Come over here with this one. Yeah. And again, we still want to make sure we have some angle down like this so that the perspective of the guest at the table, they're able to see the full bloom coming down towards them. And I really like that. To me, that is dynamic design and it gives your client and your client's guests the opportunity to interact with the arrangement as opposed to the arrangement just being on the table. And we wanna get more interactive and we want people to really experience the hard work that goes into these arrangements. You'll notice as the more product we place, the tougher our placements become, which is why it's important to hold it like a pin. And we can really feed it in much more intentionally. And we're just gonna keep on going. Um, and I think that coverage at the bottom and angling those flowers down 
really, really helps. And so as I'm going through, I'm trying not to have any of my flowers on the exact same plane, meaning side by side or the same height. I always wanna have a height difference or a separation to some degree so that I don't have a lot of bunching and overcrowding in the centerpiece. That, that kind of doesn't suggest that it was that well of a built design. So we always want to make sure that we have that depth and dimension in our pieces. If that's your design style, be clear, because it might not be, and it does not disregard everything I just said. But I'm talking about my design style, so hey, you know, we all have it. Yeah. Sometimes a nice little twist will help you get into position wherever you want it to be. We're still going around, following these beautiful lines and breaking up some of the perfect lines if it's a little too contrived looking, you know, to make sure that we're still bringing value and not just putting flowers in an arrangement. We want there to be a tremendous amount of value there. And I think we're building just that. I only have a couple more of these beautiful lavenders. And I'm looking to find the perfect placements, the perfect put place for value. I think I found some here. Yes. And then let's see. Keep on sending. Then I feel like we need something here. Wonderful. Okay, so again, this is our front. Um, you can see again where you have highlights of flowers that are higher, you have some that are lower, so that we can have a lot of in and out, a lot of different growth patterns in this organically planned centerpiece. So we are rolling pretty quickly. So now I want to start putting in some of our snapdragons. And what I love about snapdragons is they give you the opportunity, again, for movement. You can see the lines of the snapdragon are very complementing to the lines of the Eliagnus. And so I'm actually going to insert some of these snapdragons a little bit further out. And then I'm going to angle some of them a little bit more in and down so that I can get this wave of movement all throughout the piece. And then also the perfect highlight of lavender to offset the other two tones that we have. And so I'm just gonna go in really liberally. Um, if I didn't mention, we also had 25 of these beautiful lavender, big lavender head roses. And now we're gonna go in with four bunches of our snapdragons. Another story about when I first got started, I was the snapdragon king. It was just something about the softness and the movement of a snapdragon that really captivated me. And you would find snapdragons in just about everything that I designed. But that was also because I didn't know much more about any other flowers at that time. But the more we grew, the more we learned, the more variety we started to see in our work. And I think that that's pretty consistent with new designers and just kind of identifying your voice and what's gonna make you special in your market. And that's all you should be doing. I'm just gonna go in again, really liberally. Like I don't have any placement in mind, but to make sure that there is a lot of the Snapdragon everywhere so that you can get the value out of it. A lot of times when you pepper things throughout, you don't get the impact that you thought you were gonna get. And so by adding these in with a lot of volume, we're now able to get more impact of the color, but also the movement and the shape of the, of the flower. Still coming in really liberally. I believe we have four full bunches, which will be the equivalency of 40 stems of Snapdragons. They come 10 stems to a bunch. I 
love the movement that we're starting to get and breaking up some of the symmetry and the lines of the hydrangea and the roses. Even though that wasn't intentional, sometimes it just happens. But now we're able to come in and reestablish some new lines and new opportunities for movement. We keep on spinning. Keep on inserting. We really want this piece to be like holy snapdragon. Right. Almost finished with our snapdragons. Keep on spinning and finding opportunities for movement with our snapdragon. see an opportunity, I am taking full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Loving how this is coming together. finished. Two more. And where should we put you? I think we're going to put one of them here. And one of them here. Okay. So let's get another perspective. And I think again, we established this is our front. And again, we'll do a nice rotation to see if we missed anything. I don't see any egregious errors or any errors really at all because again I'm designing with my design voice so it always is going to work the last is oh how did I miss this one no you got to get in here buddy so let's find <clears throat> excuse me placement right here perfect okay so last but not least we're going to add our beautiful tulips that have already started to open. We go ahead and stake them and tape them down for really easy insertion. And what we notice is as the hours pass, as they're out of water, the tulips start to kind of go towards the light and they open up, really giving us a beautiful presentation. And, and it really suggests that the arrangement is alive. And that is something that I find extremely valuable. And all we're gonna do kind of go in at some different angles and create almost like a cascade feel. We have them all kind of trailing on that same line, but not in the exact same placement. Then I think I want to mirror that similar placement over here where we start off kind of high. And then we have these beautiful pieces. And honestly, these have opened in the last few minutes that we've been talking. And I love, 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 love that. Get them nice and deep in there because they'll stay. And then we're going to go again down. And it's okay, again, if the symmetry is not perfect because, again, we're not going for perfect symmetry. Let's see where we can find a nice spot for the last one. And I think the last one should go right there. Okay. Okay. So we're almost finished with our tall centerpiece. And before we crown our bespoke vase, some homework things or some housekeeping things, and I'm showing this, it says Great Value Glass King Cleaner, but I'm sure we all in our design spaces have things that are maybe in the wrong place or maybe we put something in a container that is not labeled for. Um, but yeah, this is finishing touch. So it's a hydration spray that will prevent the flowers from wilting prematurely. So I literally go around this entire piece and I very liberally cover it 
with each bloom with a considerable amount of hydration spray. Um, because we don't really want to put this much time and effort into a centerpiece that does not make it to its destination. So I'm going around and sprayed it very liberally so that once we sit at the top our beautiful vase, we don't have to worry about a thing. So, let me move some stuff out of the way. I'm going to sit this beauty back here for just a second. And we are going to replace that with our beautiful bespoke face. Again, let's talk about it again. Let's talk about the beautiful cuts. We already talked about the beautiful cascading greenery that's gonna trail down these beautiful lines. And now I think it's time to crown her. So let's lift her up. And yep, we're gonna have a little bit of water dripping and that's okay. And there we have the Flower Guy Bronze Signature Tall Centerpiece Atop Accent Decor's Bespoke Vase. So I also wanna talk about, slide this over just a little bit. I also wanna talk about some of my other favorite accent decor pieces, and I have a couple of them with me now. So, this is another one of my favorites. This is the Champion Urn. I typically use this for bar accents. I love it in curated groupings. I think that it's a beautiful classic piece that goes well with metal tones as well as clear glass, and it's timeless. It never goes out of style. But this is another one of my favorite accent decor pieces. I absolutely have been in love with the Ballery Compo. This particular Compo is one of my standard low centerpiece vase options. What I love about it is the mercury glass finish that is classic, it's never going out of style. Even in the most drab spaces, the accent of the metallic finish really brings life into the space, works perfectly in ballrooms that are more elaborate and then it brings a little bit of life to a more darker, more moody palette. And then also we have the Melrose Pot. This comes in various sizes as does the uh, Ballery Compote. And um, I've used it at this size, smaller and larger. I love this particular vase because of the geometric pattern for the couples that are looking for something that isn't so standard, that isn't you know so traditional and wanna go with something a little bit more contemporary. This particular pot goes very, very well. We've used it in museum settings and you know fine art style arrangements. And so these are a few of my favorite accent decor things. And I want to thank Accent Decor for giving me the opportunity to record this video for all of you Accent Decor folk who love their product, but maybe was wondering how do I incorporate some of these beautiful pieces into my everyday design. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Braun Hansborough, the Flower Guy Braun. Please feel free to follow us on every social media avenue, primarily Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to have you also join my village. The village is a motivational community for wedding and event professionals. So with that said, I'm signing out to get ready to design the weddings for the weekend, but it has been a pleasure chatting with you and have a great fall season. Thanks.